This edit is 20 frames per second. This one is 18 frames per second. This one is 15 frames per second. My edits are usually lower than the standard 24 frames per second, which means they are considered low frame rate. I make them on Premiere Pro and here's how. So I begin by using my low frame rate pack, which is literally a folder full of empty clips for a majority of custom frame rates because Premiere, it truly does suck because you can't choose a custom frame rate like in After Effects. So I made this pack, which allows me to import a frame rate of my choice. Then I can remove the empty video, change my sequence settings and continue with my edit. Oh, and also I can save it as a preset. And I did make a tutorial on this. It was quite some time ago. It's in the description below if you are interested. I think it was like four or maybe three years ago. I don't know. But right now you can see I am moving on to the Twixter. You know, it's fairly straightforward. I think it would have been better if I used blow frames just so I can avoid warping on my clips. But it doesn't really matter. For this example, I just stuck with Twixter. I think it's good enough. And uh, yeah, you can see I'm just playing around with the settings, the graphs as well. You can see I'm using frame number instead of the speed. Uh, I found that frame number works better for low frame rate edits. In fact, it works better in general, but with low frame rate edits, you can be more precise if you use frame number. But yeah, as you can see, I'm just messing around with the graphs. Uh, sometimes I like using the top one, but it's broken as usual. So I'm using the bottom one, which is still pretty good. And now I'm twixtering my second clip, nothing too advanced. But then it was time to make these shakes and as always, well, I say as always, most of the time I like to make my shakes manually using Warp Transform. I think I have mentioned this a few times, I make my shakes manually and it works so well for low frame rate edits. In fact, I think this is a very common method. The reason why I make them manually is because I might have a shake in mind and if I create that shake using S shake, it doesn't really turn out looking good. So by using Warp Transform, I can be very precise and control each frame. It's about trial and error. And you'll see in a second, once I move on to my second clip, I kind of do mess up my shake and then figure out a way to make it look good because it's not always going to turn out looking as planned. But yeah, I use rotation, sorry, position, rotation and scale. Sometimes I also use the scale X and Y. You can see it just above the shift X, Y. And it lets me create more like softer bounces or shakes. And now I'm moving on to one framers. Well, kind of. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. I'm just playing around with blur motion trying to create some impact and switching to different blending modes turning down the opacity and then i think i'm creating some sort of like build up shake so that it transitions onto my second clip and for some reason every time i use blur directional out of nowhere keep in mind this never used to happen before it only started happening like a week since a week ago once i apply it onto my clip premiere pro just freezes and there's usually nothing i can do about it so i thought i had to end the recording right here luckily it started working again the reason why i use blur directional and also blur motion is to imitate motion blur because premiere pro doesn't have a motion blur feature built in like after effects does for each layer it can be very useful for one framers and also you'll see i think towards the end of this video i use rsmb which is a plugin to add motion blur onto your clips and to put it short rsmb helps hide any distortion or warp that quickster may create so yeah it can be a lifesaver but i do think applying motion blur onto your entire edit ruins the flow or at least it makes it look very unnatural so i just apply it to clips with a low setting just enough to hide any distortion. Anyways, right now I'm working on the second clip, making the shakes once again using um, the, what's it called, the position. Wait, it's not actually called position. I just realized it's called shift X, Y. I'm just so used to saying position. I guess it's the same thing, but as you can see, I messed up. It really doesn't look any good. Trial and error, that's what it's about. You know, just playing around with the keyframes, seeing which values work, and most importantly, creating impact without it looking too stiff. I don't know when, but I think I might make some tutorials on these manual shakes. That's if you guys want to see any. I know there's a lot of you that don't really want to go through this process because it's so time consuming and you prefer using something like S shake. Okay, so far so good, but it's looking bland. So it's time for Flickr. This makes such a big difference and I am going to be trying to use a higher setting at the beginning. It kind of works as one frame is if you think about it, you know, 
really flashy for the first few frames and then it gradually slows down. And if I do want to make it gradually slow down, as I said, I'm going to have to use graphs. Now it's time for even more effects. So in this case, I used sapphire rays. I'll be honest, most of the time, I don't have any specific reason to use effects like this. If it looks good, it looks good. It's simple as that, honestly. And well, to be honest, on this clip, it works pretty well because it's like shining through Aki's fingers. So I guess there is a reason. And speaking of reasons, I think that's something that I need to work on myself. I don't think spamming random effects is really like the smartest way to make an effective edit. I've spoken about this before, but I don't really apply it to myself, which is a bit stupid. At least half of the time, I think. I'm talking so much, I completely forgot what I'm actually doing a voiceover for. I think it's pretty clear anyway, but yeah, I'm just keyframing the position for the rays. So as the shake pushes down, the rays also kind of like slide up. If that makes sense, like the angle changes. Once again, I'm always going to say this impact. It adds so much impact. Okay, so here I try to create a one framer um, just by changing the, I think it was the hue or the temperature. I can't remember which one. Sometimes this works really well. I think I did something like this for my recent edit which I don't think is out at the moment. Just like always, if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Remove it, move on to the next effect. So here I used, what is it called, hotspots. And this effect is so good. It's similar to the levels effect if you've used that before, but better. And I'm still trying to figure out like different ways to use it. I feel like it could be useful for creating depth. But yeah, here I was just playing around with the graphs um, to see what works and what doesn't. So at first I thought maybe it would work like towards the middle and then I moved it to the start and then I realized I can also add it to the end and then I can create a well not a seamless loop but some sort of loop and then I was just going through it to see if there's anything else I want to add then I remembered displacement map is a really cool effect and then I realized I placed it onto the adjustment layer which doesn't actually work on Premiere and also that would have probably crashed Premiere Pro if I hadn't disabled the layer layer 2 has been disabled and the adjustment layer has like three sapphire effects. They don't work well together sometimes and it just, yeah, it ruins my day. I tried using different kinds of displacement maps. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, just, I like to stick to the default one. There's polar and then I think, was it called vector or something? They work well for certain transitions and also if you know how to use them, I don't know how to use them very clearly. So I just stuck with displacement map. And then it was time for text because I tend to use text a Well, do I use text a lot? Sometimes. I like to make my text animations or it's not really a text animation, but text effects manually, like a punch out or punch in effect. And to do this after setting it, centering it, and then changing the color, what I do is I make cuts on my text layer. So I've got this like outline effect at the beginning, and then it goes back to normal with the fill box checked and the stroke unchecked. You'll see what I mean in just a second, but yeah, uh, manual keyframes to create like a bounce. So I could use S shake, I could use the Z shake settings, but I like to do it manually. And this is how it turned out looking, which is, you know, it's simple, but it's effective. Then I try to move things around and create like a blend effect. I don't really know how to explain, but as if the text was being pushed back, it didn't really work. So I just stuck with the original result. But yeah, I did that for quite some time, just messing around with the text. And then to finish off, I wanted to show you this really cool effect, but it didn't really look good. I've done it before and it works really well. So yeah, I don't know why it didn't work this time. I think maybe my settings were wrong or something like that. To make this effect, I duplicated my layer, my clip layer, and then scaled it up, added effects, which you can see on the screen, you know, it's got this sort of chroma and also blur. Messed around with the blending modes, didn't really look good. So I used, I think it was Luma key, which again, didn't look very good. Messed around with keyframes. At the end, I got rid of it and then show you the result. So I went over to the export panel and changed my format to after codex, which is a plugin. So this lets me export my sequence at any frame rate, no matter what, because just like the custom frame rate sequence feature, you can't export at any frame rate, but using After Effects, I can change it to anything. So my sequence was 18, so I changed it to 18. And then I realized I did not apply RSMB to my clips. So I went back, opened up my nested sequences, added on RSMB and changed it to a lower setting because I don't want it to be too noticeable. It just helps hide any distortion and that's it. I'm done. It's up to my creative skills to figure out how I'm going to make it flow, how I'm going to make it look good. Color grading, really cool stylistic effects, all that stuff. So yeah, that's it.
Thank you to my members for their monthly support as always. And thank you very much for watching till the end. And I'll see you next time. Peace.